Good morning. Uh, we'll give it a shot today, but it's hard to follow up on something like that, Sean Michael. <laughs> Welcome to worship here at St. John. Uh, on this, the last Sunday of Epiphany and the last Sunday of the NFL football season. I'm sure we're all excited for that this afternoon. <laughs> Uh, might be over for the Lions, but what a wonderful year they had and looking forward to next year. Um, welcome to those gathered here for worship um, in the sanctuary, to those that are joining us on Facebook Live and Zoom. It's good to be here together. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Brien. I am obviously not Pastor Mark. <laughs> it would have been amazing transfiguration if... Uh, <laughs> if somehow I could appear like him. Pastor Mark is off this week, uh, taking a week of study and personal renewal, and it's uh, yeah, my pleasure to be able to fill in for him so that he has the opportunity to do that. What a blessing that is, um, that he takes time to do that and refresh himself. A few announcements for this morning. You're invited uh, to a Mardi Gras party, and that's going to be held on the 13th, on Tuesday, in St. John's MPR. There's still opportunity to sign up for that. There'll be good food, good fun, good company, a great opportunity to, for us to gather together in fellowship. Uh, Wednesday, the 14th, is Ash Wednesday, and we will have Ash Wednesday service here at 6 p.m. Uh, then further, on Sunday, the 18th, at 4 p.m., there will be a Tunes and Tapestries of Lent with a reception to follow. So, uh, things get ramped up during the season of Lent, take uh, full advantage of those opportunities. Uh, finally, uh, for coffee hour today, we are trying something a little new. Since the spirit is so alive and coffee hour has become such a popular bit of ministry and fellowship and true authentic Christian community together, We've started to expand beyond the space. So we've tried to add some tables. You'll find the coffee on a table in the narthex just outside the door there or out in the hallway there. Um, and the food will be in its usual place so that maybe we don't get such a long line and we all can have more time in fellowship together. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be made? Okay. If not, uh, then uh, I will invite you to rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and our refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. We are reminded that through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also the Lord be with you. And also the Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. that is refracted to different colors. Someone's gone to science class. Yes, so all of those colors of the rainbow are within the white light itself. They're different frequencies, and when the light bends, we see all the different colors, all the parts of it. I like that you're wearing a rainbow shirt. Did you know I was gonna talk about rainbows? No. No, just got lucky. <laughs> So I have this, we don't have much sunlight going on right now, so I can't show you. But if you look, you can see a little bit in, in my little prism here, the rainbow is happening. Well, it's this piece of glass that's cut in a way that helps us see rainbows. So this sticks onto my window, and it has a little solar panel there. And when the light hits it, it twists this, and I have rainbows dancing all through my room. It's wonderful. All right, so. That's where we get the colors from the rainbow, from light that gets bent. Um, now, we sometimes refer to Jesus and God as light. We might say the light of the world. Uh, we might say that uh, we have the light of God. So we, um, what sort of things do you think we would see if we could bend that light of God that's inside of us and see its different parts? What, did we, what would we see? What would that look like? So, tricky question, right? All right, so you've got the light of God inside of you. And if you are working with the light of God, what does it look like? What's that? One more time. Flowers. Flowers, okay. I'm thinking that maybe it's us doing nice things for people. It's us being kind. Maybe we might see us forgiving each other. Following the Ten Commandments, sure. What other things do you see when we are working with the light of God? Helping others. Helping others. Yeah, what do you know? What's that? Do not run. Don't run? Uh, well, <laughs> we do have a rule in school, no running, right? All right. So trying to keep each other safe, that could be a way that we are showing the light of God. Following all the rules? You barely follow the rules. <laughs> it's something that takes some practice. All right, so when we, when we take the parts of the light of God, we see people helping and sharing love. All right, so let's close with a prayer. <laughs> God, thank you for giving us the light of God that we can have inside of us and show us ways to spread your love to others. Amen.
reading is from 2 Kings. Today's reading centers on the transfer of power and authority from the prophet Elijah to Elisha, their travels which retrace the path of Joshua back to Moab, the place where Moses died, and the parting of the waters, demonstrate that Elisha and Elijah are legitimate successors of the great prophet Moses. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, and as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken away from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. And as they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept washing and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. The word of the Lord. We will read responsively the psalm. The mighty one, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Our God will come and will not keep silence, with a consuming fire flame before and round about a raging storm. Gather therefore before me, my loyal followers, those who have made covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. The spotlight of Christian ministry is not on the people who carry out ministry, but on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as God made light shine in creation, God makes the light of Jesus Christ shine in our lives through Christian ministry. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. I'll rise as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. 
Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became a dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. From the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Turning points. While I was trying to prepare for a sermon and a message for today and spent time studying, there were so many different things, so many possibilities, um, so many things spoken about and with significant meaning in this passage. And the one that struck me had to do with turning points. So today I'd like to reflect on the mountaintop experience of the transfiguration. See how it is a turning point for Jesus and the disciples after hearing from God and how that may relate to us today. Today's gospel about the transfiguration occurs in the gospels of Matthew, Luke, and then here in the ninth chapter of Mark. In each of these gospels, it comes at the end of a sequence of events that started with the feeding of the 5,000, then a trip to Caesarea Philippi, Peter's confession that Jesus is the Messiah, and the revelation by Jesus that he is going to Jerusalem to be rejected, killed, and raised. All of these things happened before today's reading. In the Gospel reading, Jesus goes off to pray in the mountains, and he brings with him Peter, James, and John, this is the second time that Jesus has called these three out of the rest of the disciples to accompany him. It seems evident that he considers them to be his closest friends and he's preparing them for leadership. For them, going up on a mountain with Jesus by itself was not anything new or unusual. They had done mountains before with Jesus such as the Sermon on the Mount. This wasn't strange for them. But this time, it turned out to be more than just the normal routine hike, more than just a prayer session with Jesus. It became a very vivid, unforgettable event that caused the three gospel writers to detail in their gospels. Their mountaintop experience was a truly amazing encounter with God. We all need times like that. We all need to be enlightened and excited and fired up. We all need the experience of being spiritually dazzled and amazed. I've had such an experience myself. I attended um, a weekend series um, with the Via de Cristo. And Via de Cristo is a three-day seminar for Christians who are looking to seek more joy, more purpose, and meaning in their lives. It's for those who desire to grow in their faith and learn more about prayer, Bible study, and sharing their faith. Three days in an authentic Christian community that gave me the sense of God's presence for the whole 72 hours, just being amongst godly people and going through the discussions that we went through. I just had the sense 
of Jesus' presence in our time together, a mountaintop experience, if you will. In fact, there is a, a weekend coming up, a men's weekend, April 18th through the 21st, and a women's weekend, April 25th through the 28th. If you are interested or would like to learn more about it, please see me. But for me, it was a mountaintop experience. In their mountaintop experience, Peter, James, and John saw Jesus as they had never seen him before, clothed in dazzling white and emanating a blinding light. Then Elijah and Moses appear and were talking with Jesus, two giants of the Old Testament who represent the word of the prophets and the law. Further, a cloud rolls overhead and a voice comes out saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. These are the same words and message that we heard at Jesus' baptism when God proclaimed uh, him as his son with whom he was well pleased. This time, God the Father reaffirms his son and adds to it, listen to him with an exclamation point. This amazing experience was very valuable, both to Jesus and the disciples. From Jesus' perspective, the presence of Moses and Elijah and the voice of his father are all signs that he was doing the right things. He was on the right track and doing what his father would have him do. Up to now, Jesus had been teaching preaching and healing in the area north of the Sea of Galilee. After the transfiguration, he came down the mountain and he headed south. As Luke put it in his account of the transfiguration, he intently set his face to go to Jerusalem. A significant turning point in his ministry and in the understanding of the three disciples. We all have or will experience many turning points during our lives. Perhaps a decision about a relationship or what interests to pursue. Maybe about an educational or a career choice. Some turning points are conscious, others not so much. Some may be imposed by a family or other persuasive people that we know. But all of them involve turning away from one path and toward another. Experiences that shape each of us along our own way. In reading the fourth quarter of your life book uh, that's been mentioned recently, I've spent some time reflecting on the turning points in my life, in the past, and contemplating those that will come. It's an interesting read and has me reflecting on those. It's particularly important at these turning points to follow God's direction to the disciples up on the mountain, and that is to listen to Jesus. In prayer, we speak to God. In the study of God's word, we listen for him to speak to us. His Holy Spirit speaks to us through the Word. So study can guide our decision making, not based on common or worldly norms, but decisions that are aligned for His will for us in our lives. Fortunately, when we study and we listen for God's Holy Spirit to speak to us, to help translate it for us, we can do that right in the comfort of our own home, right on our own couch, and we don't have to climb a mountaintop to hear God speak to us. One of the impactful talks given on my Via de Cristo weekend was about study and the invitation of the Holy Spirit into it so that he can guide us as we study. And for me, it became a really important addition to my spiritual walks so that I could do a better job of listening for God's will, especially at those turning points in life. 
Sometimes God uses extreme and amazing methods to transform us when we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit transfigured Jesus then. That same Spirit is still transforming people today. And that certainly is good news for us. The transfiguration is preached on the Sunday before Lent. And this Wednesday we will begin, and it marks, a 40-day journey, a period where we may give extra emphasis to our spiritual condition. It's a great opportunity to spend some extra time listening. Maybe an opportunity to grow a step in our study. If we're in the habit of studying daily, maybe it's taking extra time to invite the Holy Spirit into it. If we're not in the habit of cracking the good book as often as we would like, take a step. Do it at least once a week. And for those that are deeply into it, relish that opportunity, and, uh, as I do on a daily basis, to uh, yeah, be moved by it and to allow ourselves the opportunity to listen as God instructed those on the mountaintop. Who knows? Maybe it could become a turning point for us. Amen. Please rise as you're able as we confess what we believe through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
may bring praises or prayer requests before the Lord and uh, amongst our community. Are there anyone that has any praises or prayers that they would like to offer up? I would like to uh, ask for prayers for my brother-in-law who suffered a second stroke last week but also a praise that God is bringing him through this. It's coming along better than we thought. So if we continue our prayers, we're thankful. Hallelujah. Anyone else? I would like to praise uh, their congregation on my husband's 88th birthday this week and also Chuck's 77th birthday. So we have two fellows that are going graciously in the Lord. Anyone else? I see that Lorraine Steer is with us today in the Zoom, and um, I'm glad to see that. She had surgery this past week, and we pray for her speedy recovery. Amen. And we pray for an uncle's daughter who this morning we found out was in a bad car accident and he spent an awful lot of time in ER in Texas. And just general thoughts and prayers for speedy recovery. Any others? As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church that the transformational power of God enters the hearts of all people. May its leaders serve as examples of your grace and healing across time and space. God of grace, we pray, for, we pray for the creation, and we will humbly observe the swirl of wind and the heat of the bright sun. Teach us to honor all you have made and to care for the animals, plants, air, and bodies of water of this planet. God of grace, we pray for those charged with leadership lawmaking, and governance of our towns, states, and countries, that they will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and callings. God of grace, we pray for any who are sick and suffering. Guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, friendship, and care to any in need. God of grace, we pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity of all whom we encounter. God of grace. Trusting that all the saints, prophets, and those who die in faith are held in your care, we remember in thanksgiving those who have died. Grant us your gift of salvation as we await your coming again in glory. God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's offer each other peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you, everyone.
please rise as you are able. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We are gathered together around this table that has been set before us. We are reminded that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus gathered the disciples one final time for him to speak and for them to listen. They sat down to share a meal together. And while they were eating, he took bread. And after giving thanks and blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, and he said, Take, this is my body given for you. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, for all of them, and they drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, which has been shed for you and all. Do this, and remember me. In this meal, we are strengthened to share God's love with a world that desperately needs it. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined into one. Come and see. You may be seated. And for those joining us via Zoom or Facebook live today, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.